and welcome back welcome back to uh what is a tpms video probably 800 at this point just continuing to diagnose issues here i've i've tried several things that haven't captured it all on video because i'm still going through just rather weird issues getting these sensors to program one thing that we discovered upon is that when you go to program these sensors if i come in here and I think this may be our problem. If I come in here and actually select a RAM 1500, the appropriate year, and go into programming and tell it to auto generate me an ID, there is a one, two, three, a six character hexadecimal ID. Now, it does have a zero and X in front of it, but we're not concerned with that at this point. Now, the interesting factor is if I go into the TPMS module manually on this scan tool and try to program the ID manually based off what it's going to program in this sensor, AKA the same ID there, it'll actually come up and fault out at me and say, no, it needs to be a seven digit value. Now I know what you're thinking. That is a hexadecimal number. I did when I programmed them in manually, tried to put a, a pad it with a zero in front because I've seen things do that before and it took it. However, it, it wouldn't find the sensors. It wouldn't acknowledge them. Tire pressure never showed up no matter how long we tried to do an auto relearn and trying to do using this number through here to do an ODB relearn um, also would fail. Uh, so I kind of got just, just was playing around with it and playing around with it and trying out different things. And one thing kept coming back is that even what I can find on forum posts and guides and such is that it should be a minimum of a seven digit number, not a six. And I shouldn't have to pad it with a zero. This tool should program it. And I say that because if I come into a 2013 Fifth or higher 1500 it'll program the sensors with an eight digit ID and actually update the uh, TPMS ECU module in here automatically which I'll show you now I'm gonna try an experiment here now watch what happens when I do this if I come into RAM 2500 instead of 1500 come into the same year which is the same frequency 2010 to 2013 that's what we're looking for now this part number it shows up here at the top this Schrader part number which you may not see very well but it's 5602939AB is the sensor that it's going to try to program for this comes up as a cross referen cross, re cross referenceable part compatible part with a 1500 but watch what's interesting when we do this if i say give me an auto id one two three four five six seven we have a seven digit id like everything is saying that we should have so what i'm gonna do is uh i'll um i'm gonna go around each tire i'm gonna hit the programming button and you've seen me do this in a previous video when we first programmed these sensors but i'm gonna go around and reprogram all of these sensors based on our 2500 the appropriate year but now that this particular setting is giving us the right number of digits again two four so that's one two three four five six seven yeah that's seven digits let's just make sure three six seven yeah so we got seven digits there so i'm going to go around to each wheel i'm going to program them but i'll bring you back when we see if we can then get this tool using a seven digit id to then auto program into the um, into the TPMS slash ECU. One moment. And we got you back. And I apologize for the glare coming in out the window behind me. So you can see we've got them all reprogrammed at this point. They've all been pinged. So we're going to go into learning. They all have a one, two, three, four, one, two, four, six, a seven digit ID. So now we're going to go into learning. Everything's already been pinged. So, study type OBD. Yeah. What I'm looking for, and they kind of have it mixed in here. And so, if we, so we've already pinged everything. Like tires to normal. Uh, we've already pinged. Everything's active. Turn switch then to the ignition on. Connect to TPS tool. So, let's, 
Okay, so what we're going to do next is hit our ODB relearning. Put our key in the ignition, turn our ignition on. But we're not going to start. I'm going to give it time to get itself up here. It's going to do one more ding. Yep, there it is. Now we're going to say OK. We're going to see if this will auto program. There she goes. She's programming the sensor IDs directly into the uh, TPMM, uh, TPMS module, or ECU as they also call it. Oh, ha, ha, beautiful. You should just, I'll show you what just showed up on the dash. I don't even have to take it for a test drive. Watch this. Look at that. We have tire pressure readings on all four tires and it was literally popping in there as it was writing the IDs to the truck. So this entire time, and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and shut the key off and let it rest for a second. So this entire time that we were having TPMS issues with this and fighting with it and getting it to sync and it not wanting to go, it's due to a bug. It's definitely due to a bug inside the TPMS software for the Ram 1500 uh, year. And you can actually see that we have an ODB hex ID. And I'm going to go back and look at the videos because if I remember correctly, when I've done this before, I'll go back and look at the previous TPMS videos. When we were programming, I don't think we got a temperature reading back off those sensors like we were supposed to. So I'm going to say no just now. So what we were doing before, which seems to be where the bug is at, is Ram 1500 inside of this 2010 to 2013 433 megahertz range. So what we did, we came back down, just to recap, went into 2500 for the same year. No, we don't want to delete our history because that part number cross references as a compatible part for also a 1500 for the same for a 20 for a 2012 1500 as well and you saw it there it actually was able to write the ids directly to the ecu and as it wrote them it literally showed up on the dash i didn't even have to drive this thing and do the you know finish up the learning part of it according to according to it so that is awesome that uh Woo, that takes care of the, the final hurdle uh, on this old girl. Matter of fact, I'll show you here. And let's see if it comes up. And it may, because we haven't drove it yet, or it may not. Yeah, service tire pressure system. Looks like it hasn't gotten itself quite right. But we are getting pressure readings now inside of the cab so let me do this let me uh take it for a quick drive um as it wants us to do and i'll and that light should go out from what i've been told within a mile or so but if it doesn't i'll bring you back one moment and welcome back hopefully you can see that our tpms light is out it is out after a short drive however i don't think i had to do the short drive because the code that it was throwing up and hopefully we can see a stored code and I'll show it to you here. Sorry for the camera work. Uh, let's see, read fault codes, DTC information, you'll see them stored. And what hadn't run yet was the location undetermined. And I think that is because the undetermined location were codes that were in there before we re reprogrammed the sensors for a 2500 of the 2010 to 2012 vintage. I'm sorry, 2009 to 2012 vintage. So, but with that being said, just to recap, we now have functional TPMS readings within our vehicle. Uh, and to summarize what the issue ended up being this entire time after literally fighting this for the last couple of days and going through countless internet articles on how to do a quick learn versus the long learn versus the, the self learn. Um, going back again to 
and what cinched it. I can't show you, it'll be hard to. But inside of the scan tool, when you're in the TPMS module, uh, it'll come up and give you the ability to program an ID manually. And when I did that, again, I saw that it was asking for a minimum of a seven digit ID. Now I researched it online and yes, TPMS hex IDs should be a minimum of seven to, uh, I forget what the max is, like maybe 10 or 12 digits. But either way, it should be at least seven digits, I think is what I saw online. And that coincide with what the scanner said it was needing in order to be a valid value to manually input the ID. So coupled with only seeing a six digit ID during programming and it not being able to push the settings to the TPMS on its own kind of clued in there may be a bit of a programming bug. So we went through and we tried again using the RAM 1500 settings but tried a 2013 model and that would that would program an eight digit ID it was enough to allow it to actually write the eight digit IDs to the ECU, but it wasn't, truck still wasn't happy with it, obviously, because the sensors were slightly configured slightly different. It didn't like what the sensor had to say. Uh, so then we researched it a bit further and went into, if you remember, and I can go into it here because it doesn't require the dongle on the truck to do the programming of the sensor. Make a bit of loud noise here, sorry about that. So if we go back on the TPMS, so since we knew that we needed at least a seven digit ID for this particular vintage of RAM, uh, I decided to go in here and kind of take a look at what our other options were to see if maybe they were all affected or just some. So I just kind of went into RAM 2500 one in the same year, which is again, we're dealing with, or actually not quite the same year, because you can see this is a 2008 to 2000, uh, 2008, 2009. This is 315 megahertz, which this truck is not 315 megahertz. It is 433 megahertz. So I just went into this option here. And no, I do not want to delete my history. And go into programming and just said, give me an auto ID. And as soon as I saw that that was mm, two, three, four, five, seven digits, not counting the zero and the X, I'm like, that looks a lot better. That's what it should have looked like from the beginning. And as you saw, we were able to program the sensors and get them to update via ODB. So it wrote the new ID sensors directly into the ECU getting rid of the necessity of waiting for 20 minutes for it to learn everything on its own and turned it into a rather short drive for the rest of the checks to complete and for the light to finally go out. So I guess uh, kind of a long-winded way of saying, um, if you have a launch uh, scan tool such as this one, and this one is the, I'll get you, I'll get you the, the, the software version as well. And yes, and diagnostics, yes, loud noises. So this is the X431 Pro 3S. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just a bug with a particular scan tool using the software, or maybe the software in general, but we're using TPMS software, and there is no update for it. This is the, the current version, as of at least this video. Version 10.36, we're using a... X431 TS gun as the programmer and activator. Again, it may be just unique to this tablet and this setup. I don't have another launch TPMS program to try this out on. But if you're doing this and you're having trouble programming uh, a RAM 1500, try the RAM 2500 for the same year and see if that helps you out. Because as you saw, as soon as it started writing the IDs to the ECU, the pressures immediately popped up on the dash. So again, I'm a very, 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 very happy with the outcome on this. Hopefully this helps you if you're running into the same situation. Now, the next thing we can do is, um, again, I, I didn't, this didn't need to be done to get 
um, its state inspection taking care of it was just annoying me because it was constantly dinging saying you got a TPMS problem you need to fix it and to recap on the evap issues I commented on the previous video thankfully just replacing the gas cap fixed the evap issues uh, I did check it looks like it has run all of the drive cycles that it needs to run in order for us to go down and get an inspection on it so with that being said um, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Um, again, amazing channel growth. Trying to keep that consistent growth going. Uh, the more growth we get means the more views we get, the more views of subscribed members that we have, the more ad revenue basically is what it amounts to. Uh, and it allows us to bring more content, more easily bring this type of content to the channel. Because again, we've got a lot more in store for this truck as far as the performance upgrades, rear end um, upgrade, of course, all the engine updates. And eventually, once the engine updates are complete at some point in time, we will also be dropping a Pro Charger uh, onto this truck as well. So stay tuned. We've got a lot more to come. And um, I think, and if you, again, if you haven't subscribed, please consider to do so. It'd be much, much, much appreciative. Thank you much. I'll bring you back for the next one. Bye.